there's going to be elections or, or whatnot when there are still over 10,000 people missing and there are thousands of families still looking for loved ones. I, I think that um, the, what we should guard against is, is um, forgetting or, or losing the human scale of, of this tragedy as, as time goes on and as the shock wears off. Um, and uh, our own um, uh, thoughts with the people of Japan, but also our, our attempts to, to help in whatever ways we can should be something that, that I think we, we continue to do, not only personally, but, but at the policy level. Um, but there is no doubt that, that this is a seminal moment in modern Japanese history, and, and it will be one of those moments uh, likely where, where people think of the before and the after. Uh, and so I, I think it, it is incumbent on us somewhat to, to consider what that means uh, as we get out now a month from the earthquake and we see how the government and, and society is beginning to respond. Um, Andrew and I are, are, are not uh, uh, going to uh, divide up the, the realm exactly, so to speak, on what we're talking about, but whereas I think he'll probably focus a little bit more on international um, relations and international issues, I'll, I'll do something I don't, don't do quite as much, which is focus a little bit more on, on the domestic and at least offer some thoughts uh, for, for us and that might help spark discussion and reflect off of what um, uh, Professor Tanaka has, has mentioned. Um, he talked about visionary leadership that's needed, uh, far-sighted planning, um, the importance and, and likely durability of, of a political truce. Uh, and I wish I were quite as optimistic as, as he is. Uh, I think it is uh, hard to find visionary leadership at, at most times, and, and while it certainly can um, emerge and, and come up in, in times of crisis, I think we have not necessarily yet seen that in Japan. Um, the farsighted planning is something I'll talk a little bit more about, and, and I think that that is an area for more grounds for hope, uh, but probably is the most important aspect uh, of politics after March 11th in Japan. Uh, but uh, I'm interested in his um, indication that there may be a, a, a continuing political truce. Um, I actually think the political truce will probably be short-lived. Um, it, it will not be necessarily open partisan warfare. Uh, but I think in a way, and, and I want to I phrase this the right way, um, the easy part uh, is over for the politicians. Um, if I can put it that way. And what I mean by that is uh, when you have a crisis of this magnitude, it is, it is easy uh, to respond initially. You, you know what you have to do. You have to save lives. You have to stabilize the nation. You have to provide, if you can, um, a, a sense of, of surety and, and competence. Uh, what is much harder is when you move out of the initial disaster, uh, disaster and recovery period uh, and you move into reconstruction and you move out of relief and into the long-term planning. And that's where I think, if, if I can put it again this way, that the, that the easy part uh, is over. Um, interestingly, what we've seen uh, in Japan is a, um, uh, a bifurcated response on the part of the public to uh, the government uh, actions so far. And I think this, this indicates the difficulties that the government's going to face. Um, the uh, public approval ratings for the Khan cabinet have ticked upwards since the crisis, and the last poll that I read was about 35 percent, and that's coming up from, from 20 percent, so close to doubling in terms of, of public approval opinion overall uh, for Khan. On the other hand, uh, over 70 percent of the populace is uh, disappointed and unsupportive of his response to the nuclear crisis, uh, obviously more uh, of that weight probably falls on TEPCO. Uh, but, but it's clear that there, there is a, um, a nuanced approach on the part of, of the Japanese populace to how the government is responding. And I think you will see uh, continued uh, differences in, in, in the specificities of the polling uh, to how people think the government is moving the country forward. Um, the, the biggest issue obviously for Japan moving forward is reconstruction uh, in and among uh, continued disaster relief and, and recovery operations, uh, which will obviously be ongoing for some time. Uh, the government uh, is tasked with, with, as always, multiple responsibilities. But reconstruction is the one that I think we will obviously see in coming months play a larger and larger role, uh, absorbing more and more energy, but more importantly, this is something that I think will be inherently political, as opposed to, again, everybody understanding that you have to get the SDF out 
uh, into the affected areas. You have to accept foreign aid. You have to work with your partners. Uh, the, the issue of how you reconstruct, where you reconstruct, when you reconstruct, I think will be inherently political. Uh, and the, the truth is there is no good or easy solution uh, to this. And I think at, at one level then, uh, both the, the population of Japan but foreign observers as well um, should be giving um, due recognition to this, to government efforts to uh, begin responding uh, in for the long-term recovery of Japan. What we've focused on uh, in the U.S. have been three issues, uh, which were um, very ably covered by uh, Professor Tanaka. One, of course, is the ongoing nuclear crisis and, and how that will be resolved. Uh, the second is the economic impact, the electricity uh, shortages that Japan will face, especially moving into the summer if uh, generation capacity is not brought back up uh, to where it was before the quake. And the third, of course, is how is all this going to be paid for? And there have been lots of uh, questions, and, and those of us who talk about it ha have been asked uh, incessantly, you know, what, what, what should the government do? Should it uh, issue more bonds? Uh, should it raise taxes? Uh, what, what exactly should, should the plan be? And I think the answer is that there's, there's really no, there's no good solution. And, and here, again, is where politics will come in. Those who are more disposed to a Keynesian approach to stimulating the economy uh, from uh, central government action will believe that uh, government expenditures, uh, increased borrowing, floating of more bonds is, is the, the way to go. Um, that might be uh, an acceptable uh, action, and, and in fact, it, in, in one way, it may be the only action the government can undertake, but it might be an acceptable action if Japan weren't already facing uh, what everyone was talking about the week before the earthquake hit, which was an unsustainable debt picture uh, a downgrading uh, of debt by international uh, watchdog agencies or, or, or rating agencies, not watchdogs, uh, rating agencies, Moody's and, and S&P, and political gridlock over exactly how Japan would get control of its 200% uh, debt to GDP uh, ratio that it, that it is struggling with. So borrowing on, on top of this, which to some level the government is certainly going to have to do, is only going to exacerbate uh, those problems. If the government does that then, uh, the question is, how, what, what is your uh, game plan at the, at the other side of the borrowing? The borrowing is the front end and perhaps the easier part to do, though there are, are questions about uh, whether there will be enough domestic demand, uh, whether uh, the Bank of Japan will buy some of the debt, thereby monetizing it uh, initially, or whether uh, the government will seek uh, foreign buyers, which would change uh, the debt holding picture that Japan has today, where you have about 95% of public debt is, is held uh, by uh, domestic uh, holders in Japan and not uh, not abroad. Uh, but that's still the front end. The back end is how do you get economic growth stimulated? Uh, so for longer term recovery, that will also help with uh, bringing down uh, the, the debt picture. And here uh, there are mixed messages coming from uh, the Khan cabinet. Uh, there have been tax increases uh, brooded about, the potential for tax increases, as well as the cancellation of uh, the proposed 5 percent cut in the corporate uh, income tax or the corporate tax from 40 to, to 35 uh, percent. Um, I would expect there will be some level of tax increase uh, in Japan. In fact, public, show, public polls show overwhelming public support for some level of tax increases in order to help with the, uh, the uh, costs of reconstruction. Uh, and the head of K. Donren came out uh, uh, several days ago saying that he would be in favor of uh, canceling or uh, at least postponing for the foreseeable future the, the corporate tax rate cut. Um, so uh, on the one hand, you have a public dynamic that is willing to sacrifice and to support the government uh, in whatever it feels it needs to do to begin the reconstruction process uh, and, and dealing with the immediate effects of, of the crisis. Uh, on the other hand, however, you have plans that I, I am not sure are the correct long-term way forward for Japan for stimulating uh, the economy. Uh, I think that if you increase the consumption tax or the personal income tax, you obviously are going to depress consumer uh, spending and consumer activity, which is the one thing that everyone for several years has been saying needs to be increased in Japan, that dynamic hasn't changed. Uh, Japanese companies need to become more competitive abroad. They need to uh, continue to invest in R&D. They need to recapitalize. 
Uh, they need to become more efficient. They need to hire more permanent workers and not temporary workers. Uh, the odds of that happening, uh, if you uh, de facto keep uh, the taxes where they are, increase them uh, on the corporations, is also slim. So I think the, the, the corporate outlook uh, is one that uh, needs to be paid very careful attention to as the driver uh, of much economic recovery uh, in Japan. There are other um, truly interesting, and I hate to put it that way, but truly interesting questions connected with recovery because we're, we're talking about millions of people whose livelihoods have been destroyed, towns have been destroyed, uh, entire lives have been altered. But that said, the question of how the government will reconstruct uh, Tohoku, this northeast coastal area, uh, is really going to be one of the most um, important long-term planning operations ever undertaken by a democratic government, at least in, in, in modern times. Um, what will be rebuilt? Everything? Every town? Every road? Every building? Um, how will it re be rebuilt? All at one time? Staggered? Phased? Uh, will there be certain areas that will be considered more germane to the long-term uh, socioeconomic health of the region, not just social, not just economic, but combined? Will those be built first? Will there be a focus on uh, building around the major cities, Sendai, for example? Um, this is an area where uh, it has been harder hit by the demographic decline that has been affecting Japan. Wages have been consistently 10 to 15 percent below the national average. Um, is it economically viable and feasible to reconstruct this area to make it March 10th versus March 11th? Those are political questions that, that will have to be answered. The um, reconstruction and, and relief efforts, at least right now, are being largely directed uh, by former Chief Cabinet Secretary Sengoku, who was brought back in uh, to handle this and who is, is gathering around him a large group of, of experts, um, uh, which is a good move, I think. I mean, very capable, capable politician. Uh, there is, uh, apparently there are plans for a reconstruction planning conference to take place this month or, or next month. Those are very good signs. Uh, but I don't think we should expect uh, positive and quick early movement to translate into uh, very uh, quick long-term plans being, being uh, created. Um, there will have to be very significant analysis done of what is feasible. Uh, Professor Tanaka at the end of his remarks talked about um, the importance of urban planning, model towns, green towns, age-friendly towns, all of this is very, very significant and important. Uh, I don't think any of it's ever been done before. So we've, it, will, it will tax the intellectual capital of Japan to think about, about how to do this. Um, let me um, finish up uh, briefly by talking about um, two things, uh, though there's, there's so much to talk about before uh, Andrew takes us into some of the international side of it. The first is um, future disaster planning, and the second is, is long-term uh, changes, uh, social changes in, in Japan. Again, you know, all of this is uh, speculative at, at, at best, but I think important to at least think about. Um, future disaster planning, uh, Japan, as we know, uh, has spent decades, and really in modern times since the 1923 great Kanto earthquake that devastated Tokyo. Uh, in all different types of, of disaster planning. And Professor Tanaka referred to that, how it saved the lives of students and faculty uh, of Tokyo University who were in the affected regions. Everyone who's been in Japan, lived in Japan, uh, of course, if you're Japanese, grow up uh, knowing uh, how uh, to respond to an emergency, where to go, families keep emergency packs and, and the like at, at home. And clearly, um, that, that helped save uh, lives, uh, although uh, 